And it is an absolute honor to be here and to be a part of it. Seriously, guys, God bless the United States of America. When I go to events like this here in your beautiful country and I meet so many extraordinary people like yourselves, I get exactly why they call this country of yours the land of the free and the home of the brave. You guys are so full of life, fighting spirit, and faith. And in the current state of our world, those things are so desperately needed, especially the last thing, faith. I talk about this all the time. America and Europe are facing incredibly similar problems. And that's because we are under attack by the same sick globalist agenda. As a result of that, my continent finds itself in rough waters, and that is to put it mildly. Europe is being flooded with immigrants from non-Western countries, our national identities are being destroyed and replaced. Our sovereignty is given up to bureaucrats, unelected bureaucrats, may I add, in Brussels. Our churches are closing their doors, and we are spending billions and billions of euros on a non-existing climate crisis and a war in Ukraine that isn't even ours. In fact, I would go as far as to say that we are paying for our own destruction. And now, as a political commentator, you all know that I've been extraordinarily preoccupied with the attack, the organized attack, on our beautiful civilization. But my background is actually in law. And if there is one pattern that I have noticed over that there is an attack carried out against our constitutional rights, our liberties, and our property rights. And one of the tactics that the globalists use to permeate their agenda is by flipping the presumption of innocence around and turning it into a presumption of guilt. Now, for those of you who don't know, the presumption of innocence is one of the most important legal principles of free democratic societies. It is the idea that every person accused of any crime is proven until, is, guilt, is, is innocent until proven guilty. It means that you cannot be stripped of your rights unless the government has sufficient proof of your, your wrongdoing. They cannot lock you up just because you said something that they don't like, just because they don't like you, or because you disagree with them. It is this very principle that sets us apart from totalitarian regimes supposedly, at least. Because with the current state of the rule of law in the Western world, and also here in America, I can tell you I am very worried. I don't have to tell you about the political trials being carried out here in your nation. Let's name the former president, President Trump. Somebody is around here. Steve Bannon, and there I say, people condemned by mob rule like Derek Chauvin and some of the January 6 protesters. But even we, ordinary people, are increasingly treated by our establishment and by our government as criminals. We find ourselves in situations all the time where we have to prove to the state that we are not criminals. Let me give you a few examples. During the COVID pandemic, we all remember it. Those of us who were unvaccinated were treated like grandma killers, 
the people who, for some reason, were the cause of the pandemic and because of us, it didn't end, right? I think you had a winter of death here. That never happened. We were accused of that. And we had to prove our innocence, in this case, our health, to the state all the time to partake in everyday life by getting these tests shoved up our noses. And of course, the pandemic is over, finally. But those of us who now oppose the next steps, like digital identity or central bank digital currencies, and we say, no, actually, we want to use cash money. We now are accused of being covert money launderers who must have something to hide. And those of us who do not want to eat the bugs, who like our steaks, We are being accused of destroying the entire planet. Hack the other day in the Daily Mail in the United Kingdom, there was a headline that said that breathing causes climate change. Now, the you're the carbon they are trying to reduce meme is becoming a little too real for my liking. And that might sound funny, but we have to think about what that means. We don't just have to prove our innocence, but we now live in a time where we have to justify our entire existence to our Malthusian overlords. And so I cannot stress enough, ladies and gentlemen, how critical it is that we recognize and reject the manipulative argumentation that they confront us with. Because what the people who use these types of arguments are trying to instill in you is that your rights are dependent on your compliance and your obedience. But if there is one thing that your founding fathers understood, it is that your rights are your rights not because the government says so, but because God says so. You here in America have unalienable rights that are endowed upon you by your creator. Never forget that. I mean it, because in the Netherlands where I am from, our constitution doesn't state that. And over the past few years, I have seen with my own eyes what the consequences are, the detrimental consequences are, if your constitution does not state that. During the pandemic, protesters and dissidents who went out to protest, people who exercised their fundamental rights and opposed the tyrannical government mandates were met with extreme police violence in my country. And may I remind you of the Dutch farmers' protests? As you know, I was very much involved in that. And those brave farmers who objected to the state's plans to just rob them of their land, also they were met with extreme police violence. They even shot at a 16-year-old boy that was driving away from a completely peaceful protest. They missed his head by one inch. So please allow me, as a European woman who is not even legally allowed to carry pepper spray, to tell you, hang on to that second amendment of yours for dear life. And one other thing that I urge you to hang on to that is much more important and will offer you much more protection than your Second Amendment is your faith in God. Your faith in God is what will give you the strength and courage to counter every single lie that you are faced with. It is, what, it is what will point you back in the direction of the good, the true, and the beautiful. And sure, sometimes things get tough, I know. But rejoice in the wins that we've already made. 
Because I don't know about you guys, but I can feel in my guts that something has shifted. Something is changing. The tide is turning and the nationalist right wing is making win after win. Even in my homeland, one of the most liberal nations on earth, one in four people went out to vote for the so-called far right. The genie is out of the bottle, ladies and gentlemen, and the intimidation game has finally lost its power. Don't mistake my hopefulness for naiveness, though, because yes, a day may come when the courage of men fails. But those of you who love Lord of the Rings know what I'm about to say. Today is not that day. <laughs> If you fear God, then you fear men, you will become unstoppable. So when you leave this wonderful conference, remember one thing, always be a radical in the fight against evil. And let me end the speech with a few words one phrase from your great American poet, Walt Whitman. It is my personal motto in life, and I hope it will become yours. Ladies and gentlemen, resist much, obey little. Thank you very much.